Um, Prime TV are very well renowned in the industry. Um, they're consultants. They're, they're great at setting up things. So when it comes to like setting up portable studios um, or anything like that, Chris is the man to speak to. So Chris, without further ado, I'll throw this straight away to you. <laughs> give us a little bit of background about yourself. Okay, well, give you a bit of background about my company. Um, it was formed in 1990 by my business partner by my business partner Nick Ludlow. He was uh, originally a cameraman for the US networks, um, you know, ABC, NBC, that type of thing. Um, and that was at the point where everything was going freelance. So he bought himself a first kit, and then he bought a second, and then a third, and then a fourth, and then brought his friends together, and that's how the company was formed. Um, they, did, they happily did the news and magazine shows probably for about six, seven years. And then when I actually joined Prime TV, I started bringing it in a slightly different direction, which was um, to um, entertainment, children's and specialist factual. So we went on after that to become specialist suppliers for BBC, ITV, you know, we worked on, you know, for children's work on shows such as CD UK, um, SMTV, Live and Kicking, um, and then we worked on the major Saturday night shows, and we still do work with um, productions such as Under Deck Saturday Night Takeaway, um, and um, we also do um, other work for comedy, like we also do, I work with Richie on this, uh, a production called No Such Thing As The News. Um, me personally, I was educated here in London, down at Imperial College. I really wanted a job in radio. I really desperately wanted a job in radio. I've got some radio people in the back over there. Couldn't get a job That's in radio. Well. <laughs> <laughs> could not get a job in radio, so I had to sort of muck in and get any media job I could get. So I started off in television, um, working away from the bottom rung to eventually um, becoming you know, project managers for major events for things like you know, the Royal Wedding um, and you know technical manager for um, sort of large sort of television shows as well. Um, I think that basically covers me. So Chris, um, in terms of setting up like your own portable studio, yes. is the man to speak to because he set up things like from the Royal Wedding right the way up to behind the scenes at Anton Deck. Behind the scenes. Behind it's the not scenes. behind the scenes. It's the actual hidden camera. Yes. The hidden camera. All the all the in your ears and the um, the undercovers. Oh, that the, the yeah, sort of you can see, sort of stuff. Yes, you can see the back of my head on many a production. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. So, um, Chris, if uh, we obviously I've been speaking to a lot of presenters here this evening, and a lot of people have been sort of like telling me that they're set up as the, you know vloggers, they're also experts in their own field. They're trying to push them push themselves forward independently. Um, and they're setting up their own studio at home. What five tips can you give straight away um, to people? Five, let's see. Five. First thing is, um, you've got to figure out where you're actually going to broadcast from or record. You are going to need a private room um, or you know, somewhere where you can, uh, you know, where the um, sound is going to be quiet, where you can control the lighting. Um, especially if you're using cameras which are, shall we say, more semi-professional than professional, because unfortunately they, you know, they don't respond well to, say, sitting by in front of a, front of a, uh, a window, because essentially you look like a special hostage video from the IRA <laughs> back in the 80s. Is that because you just look... Um, you're you're in silhouette, yes. Outside. Essentially it's too bright from the outside, and especially with a lot of non-professional cameras, you can't even expose the face, it's automatic. So you will basically become a black outline, which is not ideal. Sometimes you can use that to your advantage. If you are turning around the opposite way and you've got sun coming in from behind you, then that can light you, and that works quite well, as long as you know that it's going to be consistently sunny. If not, you know, you, the best thing to do actually is not to rely on that, but to use your own lighting so you've got consistent lighting through all the way through. Um, that's probably the first tip, know your yeah. location. Um, second one, and this is the absolute key thing, audio. Everyone will forgive the shoddiest of video, but if the audio sounds awful or its lip sync is out, they'll just move on. You know, you, it, it's, you, know you, you don't have to spend the fortune to get that right. You know, 
it's harder, as I said, if you're using like your um, your mobile phone or something like that. But even then, you can get yourself an adapter for your mobile phone so that you can get an external tablet mic. You know, so you can actually speak properly and you'll be in sync. Same with webcams. Um, you know, you can use a very high-end webcam, and a lot of the time you'll capture the audio separately. But a lot there will be issues with audio sync, the lip sync with that sometimes. But that's something we can cover on the um, the other course, or somebody can talk to me about it afterwards. Yeah. Um, so audio, I think, is absolutely key. Spend spend your money on on a mic. I've just got to say as well. Uh, talk about audio. If you are recording yourself at home, think about the environment. As Chris said on on the first first tip, I've just done a, a couple of um, uh, hour-long episodes for um, a series of things that I'm working privately on, and I had sirens going up and down the road, and I didn't even notice this until I was playing it back in the uh, in the edit, and I was just like, I can't put that out. So you've got to be aware of all these things. So be aware of the, amp the noise that's going on in the streets. Yeah, it happens to us all. I mean, I'm also, immune to it because I live on a main road. And I, I hear these sirens all the time. And obviously, when it was happening, I didn't notice. Well, if you can produce your own stuff, if you can have a friend there as well to help out, that's always a bonus. That's another set of eyes and ears. That's not probably one of my top tips, but again, very useful to have another pair of hands. You know, who can see how well you are lit. And, you know, can have a look down the viewfinder or whatever other device that you're actually recording with, just to see that everything's okay, and that it's in record and you don't have to do it again. I know you can't do that all the time, but that is quite useful. Um, wow, sorry. So I've done the audio. Um, what about lighting? Oh yeah, lighting is key. Um, as I said before, you can use you know, uh, nature to your benefit. I mean, if you were actually filming outside, one very simple way of doing it is making sure that you know, the sun is over the shoulder of the, the, the camera person, you know, light is coming, you know, and basically you're just being lit by the sun itself. Um, if not, again, the issue you'll have is, you know, trying to fight daylight with, you know, a, only a small set of lighting is almost impossible. So, unless you're actually in a shady area and, mount, and you're using your own lights, you know, you're, the results you're going to get will be poor. You know, unless you've got a nice big professional lighting room, but for self-shooting, I don't think that's, that's going to happen. But in your bedroom, um, or so to speak, or whatever your studio space. Yeah, lighting is, is key. It's good to get a decent key light, um, you know, which will mainly illuminate your face. Um, I'll come in from the one side. Um, and then you can get a, you can either get a, something called a fill light, so that would, another one, usually less bright on the other side, or even just use some card, some bounce card, or a cheap Laster light reflector that you can buy online to basically so even out shadows. How many lights do you need to light yourself suitably for camera? It starts off at one, right? <laughs> um, and that can even be from the most home amateur of kits. And, I mean, I've seen this done before with literally a and table lamp. Know, yeah, no, the table lamp with a LED bulb in it, and then somebody's draped up a shower screen in front of it. I mean, it's not brilliant, but you can see you on camera. And again, if there's a bit of card to bounce, that's great. And if you can get the backlight as well, which again could be an angle poise lamp or something similar, so you can light the hair as well. What do you mean by the shower screen? Using it as a diffuser? Yes, exactly. Using it as a diffuser. I mean, some people use very thin sheets as well. Um, one thing to worry about here, though, is make sure you don't use tungsten bulbs with sheets and shower stuff on the shower. Health and safety. Unless you want to actually melt it and burn down your house. <laughs> it's not really very clever. It has to be cool lighting. So I won't do that. Okay, so. Uh, Back to your do's and don'ts. I think you're on the fourth point now. Oh, I'm on the fourth point. Um, sound. Yes, microphones. sound. I think we covered this before, but it, again, it's very important that the, the audio is, is clear. Now, there's various ways you can do this. You can use hand mics like we're doing, hello. Or you can use, the best thing to do, especially if you're on your own room, is just a clip mic on, on you. Again, they, they don't necessarily have to co cost the earth. I mean, a professional one, costs about 300 pounds. You can get some quite reasonable ones for about 40, 50 pounds. That's a very good investment. So whether, whether you can then put that directly into your camera um, or into various recorders like Zoom recorders or even to, um, you can get adapters for your mobile phone now which basically turns them into a I rig do them as well. Um, <coughs> yeah. They do a series of stuff. Um, if somebody's shooting using a mobile phone, that's always hard. I mean, obviously you need to, well, first things first, when shooting with a mobile phone, try not to use the selfie feature. 
because the selfie feature is a much inferior camera. Is this just on Apple or is it on... on throughout on the range, on every single okay. phone. The selfie camera is always much worse. Do you mean when you press it to turn it around? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Those cameras are, you know, they usually have bad light response, they're much lower resolution. But I said they're fine for doing various bits of bobs, so if you can have a friend with you, always good to have a friend. Um, if they can sort of operate it or you can just set the shot and you know yourself where you are when you're at. When you're at, it'd be much better to use that camera because it's far superior. Some people have even shot a series on phones now. It's quite surprising that you know, some people have shot a feature film with an iPhone. I don't agree with it, but that is done. So as long as you can get some good audio with a phone that's worth used correctly, that's great. If you can't do that and you're just doing a little thing out in the field and you're doing like a quick Facebook Live or whatever and you're having to use the selfie camera, do just enunciate correctly and actually at the phone because that, that mic is so wide it will pick up it'll pick up everything. And there we go, we've got a siren behind us or something. <laughs> Always a joy. I've got to say as well, talk about sound, talk about uh, when you're filming using your mobile phone at home. Yes. Uh, if you don't have access to a clip mic or anything, if, if, you, if you do want to buy one, go to... Um, uh, Google iRig um, and you've got like a you can actually get a clip that actually plugs straight into the bottom of your um, if you've got an iPhone it plugs straight in the bottom I don't know about Android um, but it definitely works with the um, with the uh, there are several devices right? there are um, if you haven't got one of those just make sure that the whole room um, is quiet that you're going to be shooting in I know it says it's common sense but you know you just heard that going off when you when you're talking to camera and you're starting to get passionate about the subject that you're actually talking about all of a sudden you'll forget what's going on around you in the ambient the ambient noise you'll forget about that and when only when you come to the edit you'll suddenly go what on earth was that noise I didn't hear that uh, review your rushes at the end yes yeah, absolutely okay um, so Brings me on to a question here. This is a uh, this is a problem I've got. I've, I live obviously in a minimalist environment in my house, <laughs> um, and I was shooting a, a piece of camera, and I was playing it back the other day, and it sounded really hollow and echoey. It, well, it would. What can I do to sort of like make it sound a little bit more sort of like fuller? Well, for those of you who are fortunate to live in expensive minimalist houses, um, <laughs> there are ways around this. Um, the easy, that's just basically sound reflecting around the room. All you, all you need to do is essentially add more cushions to a room. So um, soft furnishings, blankets, anything that will actually stop the reflection of sound around the room will help. I mean, the, that's why there is such thing in the industry as sound blankets, which get rigged up and around. And we also use, at many locations, like heavy black draping, just because it stops the, the reflection of the sound. Again, you know, you can bodge it at home, get yourself a duvet, Pin it up, you know, hang it over, you know, hang things on, you know, put things over the tables, anything that's a hard surface. Just try and cover it up, and then you should find that you should resolve that. Right, so I've done a few junkets in the past. I think Raj, you've done a few as well, haven't you? You've done junkets? Um, that's why they've got those, they put the black drapes around the outside of the hotel rooms and stuff like that. Yes, and also a lot of the time it's to make a neutral backdrop. Um, but again, um, that is that is always a problem um, on shoots like that, but the you know, the blankets do help massively, especially if they're double lined. We can't expect that for people at home, but just be, you know just be aware of the surroundings. If you think, oh, well, I'm going to do this in my kitchen, probably not a wise place to do it because all of its reflective surfaces, so it's all cupboard doors. Put a put a duvet down on your kitchen surface or something if you are filming in the in the kitchen. It's a bit echoey. Yeah, if it's a bit echoey, some or places blankets. are fine. Yeah, anything that's soft furniture. Okay. Now the um, yeah Facebook Live um, works perfectly well for your phone. They happily do that type of thing if you are just there on the spur of the moment because people are aware of what it is in terms of the format. You know you're, you're not educating them and having to make them. You know they will they will accept a loss of sound and a loss of quality. Now if you're doing an actual Facebook Live event. Um, in a more controlled environment, then people usually expect it to be, you know, as good as what they see on YouTube or anything else like that. Um, the um, there is relatively simple ways of, of doing it. Facebook, unfortunately, doesn't have a let's plug in a thing and then just go live. That would be really useful, but uh, unfortunately, that's not part of their um, part of their makeup. You actually have to use external streaming software, some of which is free, some of which isn't. Um, 
you, the free software works quite well um, if you're just doing a Facebook Live. Um, and that gives you options then if you buy external capture cards to then use your cameras, whether it be you know a digital SLR that you might already own, or whether you use a slightly more professional camera, which has got audio in it as well, so you can put the mics down to the, the camera, recording camera, and then stream. So there is a way of actually being able to use Absolutely. all these professional it's cameras. It's relatively simple. I could probably teach you all how to do it in 30, 40 minutes. It's that simple. Okay, do you need any extra gadgets to be able to do that? You do need some gadgets, yes. Um, you're going to need a capture card, which uh, they start off at around £100 for something that's quite usable. Um, you can get ones that are much better, but you're looking at paying like five, six hundred pounds for that. And there is actually a course that we're running, it's a workshop where you can actually get your hands dirty and set one of these studios up using um, <coughs> one of these capture cards, one of these black magic yep. decks and setting yeah, it up that exactly. way. Um, I mean, one thing that, um, I'll, actually I will be doing will be t Wednesday I believe um, we worked on a show together called No Such Thing As The News you may have watched it or may not it was on, a, it was on about 11 o'clock or not about half ten was it on? no 11 o'clock on a Tuesday evening oh, sorry no well Thursday evening and um, it was basically a panel show that we shot down in um, uh, basically down in Greenwich in a comedy club and it was rapid turnaround you know, very topical stuff now we've just had a collection so we were going to be shooting that, and now that's gone away because the BBC can't afford it at the moment because they've got unexpected election coverage. Now, the team were pretty down about that, but then they came up with an idea. We don't need the BBC. We've got fans. So they started Facebook Living, and they're starting to do the show just on Facebook on their many thousands of followers. So it means for them, they can show that there's still a massive interest in the show, and that should be recommissioned. So they can go back to the commissioners and go, well, even though you know we've just done two series of this show, you couldn't afford to make this at the moment. It's a good idea now to come back as soon as the election's over and recommission it. So that's a, that's a good way of them re-promoting themselves. That as a production company, going well, we've we've done it for you for broadcast. You know, there's not anybody in it for that now. We own the format. We'll make it anyway. Which I thought was quite neat. Absolutely. Um, going back to just the technical side of things and setting up your studio. Um, quick one, backdrops. Um, any advice about backdrops that I should use? Um, usually plain and neutral are usually the best sort of backdrops. Um, white works very well, or if you're into green screening or chroma keying, um, then you can use various backdrops like that. If, um, um, if you are going to do that, you probably need to buy yourself a pop-up blaster like um, Projector or a, um, a relatively cheap green screen, green screen kit. They're fantastic. Uh, Those pop-up blaster lights are fantastic. You can get them on um, eBay if you Google them. Um, I think they're how big are they? Um, I can't six, by, six by yeah, four. Yeah, they're about six by four. Six they're by, very good for a talking head. They're about as tall as this um, roller banner here, and about twice, uh, uh, twice as uh, twice, twice the width. And so you can do a nice talking head on there. And you can get one side black, one side white, and also if you were to get the sort of like green screen version, they do a green one on one side and a blue one on the other. eBay, and they're about 45, 50 quid. Um, also, a lot of times they're sold with kits with lights in that will actually be... Laster lights. Laster lights. Laster lights, yeah. A lot of the time they're also sold with kits in with lights, and they usually come with like two, two LED lights. Um, which is just a bulb and what we call as a shine mirror, basically a diffuser um, or an umbrella behind. So that's a relatively cheap way of lighting it. Um, also, we're probably coming on to lighting. Another thing that's quite good, if you can afford it, are um, like LED light panels, like the bigger version of, of that. Um, you can get ones that, proper ones, they're about two or three thousand pounds, but you can get ones that are adequate for about 200, 250. And also, if you're doing it, if you use stuff, it makes and you more professional. And that was £30, pounds, just to let you know. That was £30, pounds. I bought it on eBay. It's perfect for this sort of thing. It's portable, I have to run down into Soho. I'm on the tube. I don't want to be lugging loads of lighting around, so that is absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah. And I use it as a key light as well, Chris, when I'm doing my pieces to camera. Yeah. <laughs> It, it does the job, as I said. It's, um, it depends on how much money you want to spend on it. It's like if you're doing a key piece of the camera or something that's going to go to your go to your reel, it's actually better just to spend a relatively cheap amount of money, hire a kit for a day, get a friend, you know, a professional lighting, professional camera, 
and just knock it all off in a day. Like if you also like if you hire stuff from me, you can usually collect it in the afternoon before and drop it in the morning after. So you get a full day's worth of filming. You have the evening before to tinker with it and go, well, this you know, this is how I'm going to use it. Which brings me on to your your company side of things. Yeah. Um, you'll be doing stuff at home where you'll just be using your camera or maybe your your own sort of like DSLR camera or your own video camera that looks a little bit like this. Um, or you might want to go some, for something a little bit more professional. Um, and Chris has actually devised a little bit of a package for people that are self-shooting, um, vloggers, um, which consists of a camera, it consists of your sound, it's your lighting, it's your tripod, um, and a last light background as well. Um, Chris, tell me a little bit more about what's, what, what, what this package actually will enable people to... Well, it means that they'll have professional audio going onto the cameras. Um, they'll also have a radio mic, um, or I can swap it out for a hardwired mic if people aren't too familiar with how to use something like that, that we can show them happily. Um, it would also have a, you know, a sturdy professional tripod, uh, a proper camera which will record a, a broadcast quality codec. So, you know, you know, it technically would be broadcastable. Um, and then, uh, as I said, you'll have proper balance usable lighting against a neutral backdrop. So if you're just doing a straight professional talking head, something like that would work very well. And how much is a kit for a day? I believe it's 150 quid. 150 quid. So if anybody wants that, um, talk to Chris. His, his uh, website, by the way, is primetv.com, but do mention the presenter network to get that deal, because it's normally uh, about 250. If you probably easiest to email me direct, chris at primetv.com, else my people in Kyle will be all like, oh, we're charging you full price. Okay. Kind of brings us to the sort of end of the sort of like brief keynote. Now we're taking questions off the floor. Has anyone got any questions you'd like to ask Chris? Okay. Hello. Can I just ask? Yeah. Do you do you, um, you hire out equipment? But do, do, you, yeah. do you also hire out a camera person? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Prime TV .com. Yes. <laughs> yes. So if you produce something yourself, I know there's um, some channels who take direct. Yeah. Submission. Um, what's a good some good tips for if you've already produced the production, you've got it ready to go? That's a tough one because it's not been commissioned by somebody specific. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the time, that will probably just go out more at festivals or anything else. It's going to be hard to get a channel to just take that as is unless there's a specific interest and it's something that they've actually called out for um, in their commission guidelines. But even then, it will probably involve quite a big re edit. As a small producer, a small production company, if you've got a good idea, as I said, do to pitch commissioners and everything else, but the odds are they're going to make you work with a more established production company. Because if they're investing, especially in TV, you know, £100,000, you know, they're not just going to give somebody who they've never worked with £100,000, unless it's a lot of execs that they've worked with previously. It's, it's sad. What you, what you just need to get your feet under the table with a couple of productions. And then, um, you know, and then they'll do it. It's like Talpa Media, the big um, uh, Israeli um, firm that comes up with many, many formats. They didn't get any direct commissions, even though they were a massive, massive company because they hadn't worked in UK television. Or Their first two commissions, they had to co-produce. What about just building up your um, viewer base on YouTube? Absolutely. Yeah, if you can get your content out there, and that, that content you can send to a commission or in front of other people's faces, it shows that this is the stuff that you can produce. And so they're more likely to, to back another project. Okay. So what I'm saying is with YouTube, is if, if you start to get a big following, uh, once you've got a big following, if you go into a production company, they're more likely to take you seriously and then take that to the commissioners, uh, and it's more likely to be commissioned. Already, if it's that type of, if it's that type of show, then that's, you're absolutely lost. It's just very, quite hard building that's up the, those sort of yeah, like channels, channels like subscribers. Channels like whatever, they're less like... Uh, you know, like Channel M, whatever, fund it, co-fund it, they, they just won't commission it. And these days, more people are looking at how many subscribers you've got on YouTube, and how many people are interacting with your channel. Uh, you can buy subscribers on Fiverr.com. Um, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea because, because they're looking at how people are interacting with you as well, so they can, they can see that straight away. Or, or sell an OTT. Pardon? OTT platform. OTT platform, what's, what's OTT? We'll talk about it. Okay, cool. Uh, any more questions from the floor? 
Well, if anyone's interested in doing a workshop uh, in Northwest London and Shepherd's Bush, just behind BBC, um, we are running on the 14th of June. It's the only one we're doing this year. Um, there's only a limited amount of places. If you book it quick, it's £95. If you leave it to the last minute, it's 125 So, you know, it's a bit of a saving. Uh, it's a five-hour workshop setting up your own home studio office. So what we do is we give you a load of technical equipment. Uh, we've got um, a DOP there, uh, a news camera person. Um, we've got Chris, myself, I'm doing some presenter training as well. And we're going to be t talking to you about setting up a home studio office and also doing Facebook Live, so setting up to do that as well. On the fly, using a smartphone, as well as that, using um, a broadcast camera or a DSLR camera as well. So if you're interested, it's all the details are listed on the website.